Good morning and welcome to the show. My name is Koi. Now, throughout the week, we have been appreciating our heritage and culture by visiting places that not only house a number of relics and archives, but educate those who care to visit about our history and our culture. Now, another way to represent who we are as a culture is through our dressing. Now, speaking of clothes, fans of East Africa and admirers of Swahili culture, art and craft converged at the Michael Joseph Center early last month during the event's first time showcasing in Kenya. Now, for those of you who could not attend, here's a peek at what the designers showcase during the event. The fifth edition of the Swahili Fashion Week was held for the first time in Nairobi at the Michael Joseph Center. It brought together 16 talented designers from Tanzania and Kenya as well. The Swahili Fashion Week was founded by Tanzanian couturier Mustafa Hassanali back in 2008. After four years, it has become the biggest annual fashion event in the whole of East and Central Africa. This event, I know it's a bit, um, it goes a bit global slightly, so I, I know I will have the opportunity to show people my work out there. So I think it's a good chance for me to showcase in Swahili Fashion Week. And Swahili Fashion Week is just dream for me and my dream come true. But I always wanted to come Swahili Fashion Week and it was really, you know, I was trying from last, uh, last year I tried. And then I just got the, you know, that they approved me and then I'm here. The guests looked fabulous in their stylish clothes worn with elegance. As is with any fashion event, backstage was a buzz of activity as models got ready for the event ahead. So Swahili Fashion Week is all about celebrating the African uh, Swahili culture, which is pretty much the union of East Africa, right? Um, the three countries coming together to have a wonderful show. A makeup artist is basically responsible for creating new looks for different personalities. There's usually more than one makeup artist in any fashion show, and not just any ordinary one. Fashion makeup requires the makeup artist to deliver the overall look and feel of the designer's collection. Entertainment was well catered for by a number of DJs on deck who couldn't wait to get the event pumped. Your love is not enough. My clothes are Eastern and Kenyan together, mostly Eastern fabric because my, I am from, uh, my origins from Pakistan. So I use Pakistan material and uh, more Kenya be, Kenyan bead and Kenyan cards and it's a Kenyan and the Eastern culture, culture together. Kicking off the event was designed by Diana Magessa. Diana was born in Shinyanga in Tanzania, but is based in Morogoro, which neighbors Dar es Salaam. In 2009, Diana Magessa showcased her designs at Miss Universe Tanzania. Diana Magessa Designs by Diana Magessa. Hamid Abdul is also a Tanzanian designer. He is not a new name in the Tanzanian market. As young as this designer is, he clearly has a good eye for finishing. Hamid Abdul Designs by Hamid Abdul.
representing Kenya yet again is Anna Dero Designs. Anna develops her own textiles using tie and dye and bleaching and works with surface decoration in beading, embroidery and macram. Anna usually specializes in alternative bridal gowns and menswear in denim and other cotton-based fabric. Anna Adero Designs by Anna Adero. Lucky Creations are also designed by yet another Tanzanian designer. The designer behind Lucky Creations is Fortunate Peter. The finals of the Swahili Fashion Week go underway in Dar es Salaam between the 8th and 10th of November this year. Lucky Creations by Fortunate Peter. These designs are from the Vaishali Mojaria Creations. Vaishali is a Kenyan designer who is also unbelievably a full-time school teacher of arts. She graduated with a master's in jewelry, silversmithing, and related products in 2005. Today, Vaishali Mojaria is engaged in making jewelry out of paper, plastic, and affordable minerals. Vaishali Mojaria Creations by Vaishali Mojaria. Dahlia Designs is not a new brand in the Kenyan market. Gangnam Style. Dahlia Designs by Mohamed Bana have been won in this year's Kisima Awards and Miss World 2012 Kenya. This comes as no surprise owing to the creative designs witnessed at this event. Dahlia Designs by Mohamed Bana. Bringing Pakistan to Kenya is the unbeatable designs by Shenu Huda. Shenu is an emerging designer who has managed to blend in her roots well with that of the East African community. One thing that the Asian community has with the African one is pride in our culture. Shenu Huda has managed to marry the two communities flawlessly. Unbeatable Designs by Shenu Huda. More talent can be seen through these Wangeshe Muridi collections. Wangeshe Muridi realized that she can come up with her own brand while interning for one of our great Kenyan designers. Only a handful of Kenyan designers are lucky enough to showcase their work during any event, which is testimony to their talent. Wangeshi Muriti Collections by Wangeshi Muriti. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. AFAD K stands for the Association of Fashion Designers in Kenya. The association is a professional fashion organization designed to assist aspiring designers 
and fashion professionals to begin and advance their careers in the fashion industry. The association aims to ensure that the fashion industry in Kenya is recognizable in the international map. Afar K puts Kenya on the map through structuring the fashion industry within the community, as well as incorporating Kenyan culture and heritage in the international fashion market. The event did not only benefit the designers showcasing their collections, the guests also had opportunities to win various prizes as it went along. Mukao Designs started in 2002. Mukao Designs ranged from fun to elegant and serious to frivolous. Mukao continually works with leather and suede, having a love for the versatility of the material and the products it can be made into. However, for this event, they concentrated on natural fabrics such as linen and silk, and cotton and Remy. Mukao Designs by Wambo Njogu and Carol Wahome. Achara Designs by Anne Sophia Achara basically bring out a boldness vibrance and lots and lots of sophistication. And Sophie uses a lot of African prints as well as sheer fabrics, the likes of chiffon, organza and lace. The fabrics bring out elegance and sophistication. Chara Designs by Aunt Sophia Chara. This is the work of Tanzanian based designer Gabriel Mulel of Sariamo Designs. Sariamo means somebody who gives with both hands in the Mal language of Tanzania. Gabriel was voted as one of the top 10 Tanzanian designers in 2010. The Sairiamu designer was born in the Maasai village of Losinoniju in Arusha. Gabriel first ventured into fashion at the age of 15 when he helped his mother to make and sell Maasai crafts. Sairiamu designs by Gabriel Molel. Jamil Walji Couture, also referred to as JW Couture, was this year's recently held FAFA Insight winner. The Fashion for Peace Insight winner's collection is nothing short of beautiful. Jamil means beautiful in Arabic. Jamil hopes to put up collections with bolder designs and futuristic looks. JW Couture by Jamil Walji. Sarah Masenga collection uses all kinds of fabrics, but especially African prints since they are close to her heritage. The collection is inspired by fabrics and color. The designer of this collection is last year's Imagine Designers Competition Award winner during the Swahili Fashion Week. She is a 23-year-old Imagine Designer who is currently pursuing a bachelor degree in mass communication in Dar es Salaam, her hometown. Sarah Masenga Collection by Sarah Masenga.
Poisa designer Patricia Mbella finished off the show with a bang. The Poisa designs have evolved over the years and finally settled to the niche of fine art where Patricia uses hand painting, printing, dyeing, marbling, beading as well as focusing on interesting garment construction and turning the garments into wearable art. Patricia's work is inspired by Africa and unique world cultures. Poisa by Patricia Mbella. The Swahili Fashion Week is today a key regional event on the social calendars of not just fashion lovers, but for the entire culture, art and craft scene of East Africa and beyond. Everyone has the talent, everyone has the taste. You know, it's actually in the actually it's in the eyes of the beholder what they like, what they don't like. I cannot criticize anyone, but I feel everyone has tried. But I know the Kenyan industry is moving very fast in terms of fashion. I must say that Kenyan designers they are still one step ahead, especially when it comes to clothing construction, the style, the, the thoughts of, of style. But in general, even in, uh, in, in Africa, we tend to use common fabric. Stay tuned for Eve Sisters. That's coming up next. I was scheduled to be the first black female premier of my nation. They were training me. They were betting on me. And I walked away. When you talk about developing something new, it's like putting an elastic band, one attached to one pillar, that says good and past. And another piece of elastic band attached to another pillar that says better and future. And when the tension between the two gets great, you've got to decide which one you're going to clip. What is happening, we're straddling the fence. Sometimes you've got to hold your nose and jump. Sometimes you've got to go to the edge of a limb and then break it yourself. Your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. And the engineers of a new constitution and the 2030 vision should be taken seriously. The world is demanding a new economic model so that we can move beyond the 1776 economic model presented by Mr. Adam Smith. One of the things that is pushing this is we want to go from good to great. We want to go from better to excellence. And there's a tension. Confusion happens when a person fails to make a decision that they know they have to make. When you hear people saying, I'm confused, is because they know they have to make the decision, but they're afraid. They know what they have. They know what, that what they have is not working any longer. They see the options, but they're afraid. They're not afraid of failing. They're afraid of succeeding. Because if they succeed, it means that they have to have a change of paradigm. It means that they no longer are a part of the status quo. It means that people might misunderstand them. It means that for a while, they may have to let go of all old friends. Ecclesiastes Solomon, the smartest, the wisest, the richest man in the world said, to everything there is a season, 
a time and a purpose for everything under the heavens. There's a time to be born and a time to die. In other words, everything has a birth date and everything has a death date, no matter how good it is. To hang on to something whose statue of limitation has come and gone is to place something that is dead on life support until the capital resource for the future is eaten up. And when you get into your future, you have nothing to show for it. There comes a time when you have to pull the plug. And what the government is saying, good or bad, it's time to pull a plug. We're ready to celebrate our 50th. And if you notice, I'm saying ours. Because I'm a part of you. We live in a global village. If you win, I win. And you've got to win. It's a race. Why should only America win or Japan win? Why can we not win as Kenyans? Is it because we're afraid to announce to the world that we are in the race? Are we afraid of rejection? Are we afraid of being misunderstood? Are we afraid to say that you have branded us wrong and we are changing the brand? We are not inviting anyone else to brand us as a nation. We are standing up with our voice lifted up on high. We are not asking another nation to give us a platform for our voice. We are providing our own platform. It is our God-given right, and it's time for Kenya to stand up like every other nation and to declare we are in the race. The business depression and the current recession has marked the death of one age and the birth of another. Stuff happens. You're either going to be aware of the stuff that's happening, or you're going to be making stuff happen, or when stuff happens, you're going to wonder, where was I when the stuff was happening? I love sports. There are several people and groups of people that are very important in sports if it's going to be played right. Number one, you're going to get those that sit in the bleachers. Very important because they pay. Without them, you'll have a sports team but not making money. Number two, you have the coach. Usually they can't play, but they know how to play. And they tell the players who know how to play how to play. Then you got the players. They're in the game. They're the ones that get hurt and dirty, nosebleeds. Then you've got the cheerleaders. They're cute. They're not relevant, but they provide entertainment. <laughs> and then you got the game changers. Kenya. Businessmen, businesswomen, policymakers, legislators, engineers, whoever you are, you've got to decide whether you're going to sit in the bleach, bleachers and watch the game, whether you're going to coach the game, whether you're going to be in the game, whether you're going to be cute. And people say, oh, aren't they cute? Well, let the game build again. <laughs> or you're going to be a game changer. It's all about decision. I just feel in my heart, my spirit, that Kenya needs to be the game changer for the continent of Africa. The world has experienced approximately 40 shifts. Stuff happens. And when the stuff hits the fan, it starts to stink. A lot of nations are rottening, they're atrophying. Why? Because they have no idea what the shifts are. Before I get into my presentation, I want to rattle it off. I don't have time to teach it. 
but I just want to rattle it off. What does these shifts look like? Number one, an appetite shift. People's appetites have changed. Just give me a little more volume on my mic so I don't have to scream. People's appetites have changed. They're not asking for what they used to ask for. The deepest craving in every human being is an organic craving. It's within all mankind, not just some of us, all of us. We want self-actualization. We have a craving to be cared for, to be loved, to be acknowledged, to be taken serious, to be appreciated, and we have an appetite for accomplishment. The thing about accomplishment is this, that once you accomplish something, all of the adrenaline is over and we seek new accomplishment. You just can't go around and around the same tree and say that we have progress. You cannot sit with a pink elephant in the room, everybody walking around it every day, asking, what's that smell? When I show up, I'm the one that calls a spade a spade. If you want truth, I'm your girl. I walk in and I said, it stinks up in here, is a pink elephant. I don't like to get my hands dirty. One of you is going to get this elephant out of the room. It's either me or the elephant. And guess what? I'm here to stay. We need to do that in industries. We need to do that in our government. We need to do that in our educational system. Acting like it's not there and calling the best consultants are not going to change anything. We have to embrace it. Where did we go wrong? What do we need to address? It's like someone sitting in front of me and asking, well, I'm making all this money. Why don't I have money at the end of the year? Well, you tell me. You're the one that's spending all the money. But since you want to pay me $9,000 an hour, cha-ching, cha-ching, I'll tell you. But, but most of us know what needs to be done. Talking about it, describing it, you're no better than a rap artist. A rap artist, they're articulate. Throw your hands up, wave it in the air like you don't have a care. Once upon a time in a nursery rhyme, there were three bears. Hey, oh, one was a papa bear, one was a mama bear, one was a wee bear. Hey, oh. They all went to walking in the deep water talking and along came a little girl with long flowing golden hair. Her name was Golden Lux. Up upon the door she knocked. No one was there. She didn't care. You know, they describe everything. <laughs> and that's what the average leader in many countries do. Description without prescription is frustration. I want to stop talking about doing something. And let's roll up our sleeves and let's get it done. And you know, if you dare to stick your neck out, you are going to become the scapegoat. Don't take it personal. Because after you walk away and the next person shows up, they're no longer talking about you. They're talking about the next person that has the audacity to do something. So it's not a personal thing. We're looking for a scapegoat. Someone to blame our miserable state on. And as long as a nation blames their situation and state on government, they're going to live in a realm of deception. And the worst deception is self-deception. Because government is by the people for the people. What is wrong with Kenya? The people. You voted your government in and you can vote them out. But the onus belongs on the people. And unless you take responsibility 
for where this nation is. No amount of voting and voting this person in and that person is is going to change the existing condition of this nation. If we're going to change it, it's going to be have, to have to be at a grassroots level. But we don't have enough capital to do what we want to do. Swahili Fashion Week is a platform founded and created in 2008 by celebrated Tanzanian designer Mustafa Hassanali. Now remember that there is nothing wrong in taking pride in your heritage. It doesn't stop there though. Don't just walk around feeling proud, but take the time to learn about our history in order for you to appreciate it. Write to us on midmorning at standardmedia.co.ke and don't forget to check out our Facebook page. It's called KTM Midmorning. Now if you enjoy the show, be sure to like our page. Have a nice weekend and let's meet on Monday.